Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today, we're looking at one of Intel's brand new six core laptop CPUs that were officially unveiled yesterday. The CPU in question is the Core i7-8750H, and it's one of seven new Coffee Lake H series processors designed for performance notebooks, workstations, and gaming laptops. The Core i7-8750H is essentially the successor to the widely popular KB Lake Core i7-7700HQ that was used in nearly every gaming laptop to hit the market in the last year or so. I expect the i7-8750H will also be the go-to chip for gaming laptops and other performance mobile devices, so this review will be pretty useful to anyone looking to upgrade to one of these new Coffee Lake H series systems. The key improvement to the i7-8750H is in its core count. We're now looking at 6 cores and 12 threads, up from 4 cores and 8 threads in the i7-7700HQ, while keeping to the same 45 watt TDP. To fit these extra cores in the same TDP, Intel has gone with the same approach they used with the KB Lake Refresh U-series CPUs we've already looked at. The base clock speed has been reduced from 2.8GHz in the 7700HQ to just 2.2GHz with the 8750H. However, while the base clock has been reduced, Intel is pushing single core performance higher with these new 8th gen processors. The 8750H hits a maximum of 4.2 GHz on a single core, up from 3.8 GHz on the 7700HQ. It's also capable of the same 4.2 GHz clock speed on two cores, along with 4 GHz on up to four cores and 3.9 GHz on up to six cores. That's a pretty big jump in clock speed considering the 7700HQ topped out out at just 3.4 GHz in all core workloads. You'll also see 9 MB of L3 cache in the 8750H and it's been manufactured using Intel's 14 nanometer plus plus process which is the same as desktop Coffee Lake parts. And joining the i7-8750H in the lineup is another 6-core 12-thread Core i7, the i7-8850H, which features increased base and boost clock speeds. The Core i5 line with the 8400H and 8300H remain 4-core 8-thread parts, while at the top we have the unlocked Core i9-8950HK. The Coffee Lake H series is completed with two Xeon chips for mobile workstations. Those wanting to buy a gaming laptop won't see these chips inside their systems, but they are technically part of the new Coffee Lake lineup and they will be great options for performance, productivity oriented devices. Hopefully we'll be able to get our hands on devices with the full range of Coffee Lake H CPUs inside in the next couple of months, but for now we're just testing the Core i7-8750H. Our test system is the new Gigabyte Aero 15, which I'll be reviewing in the next week or so fully, but for now is our test platform for checking out the first six core laptop CPUs. Aside from the i7-8750H inside, this laptop also packs an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070 Max-Q GPU, 16GB of DDR4-2666 memory, a 512GB PCIe SSD, and a 1080p 144Hz display. And a quick note here before people inevitably talk about this in the comments, yes, testing laptop hardware can be a bit tricky, especially in an apples-to-apples -apples way, because we can't just swap out components like the CPU and GPU to remove bottlenecks when necessary. But throughout the benchmarks ahead, we will be focusing on the closest possible comparisons we can make with the test systems that we have used. Of course, as the Aero 15 only has a GTX 1070 Max-Q inside, in some GPU and gaming tests we will be GPU limited. However, this does present the most real-world results, as the vast majority of laptops to use this CPU will have a discrete GPU no faster than a GTX 1070. Yeah, you can get faster GPUs like the GTX 1080 in laptops, but they're expensive and typically not the most popular options. And I did make one hardware change to the Aero 15 for this CPU review, and that was to swap the memory configuration from single to dual channel. This laptop ships with a single 16GB stick inside, but as most other laptops in our charts use dual channel memory, I swapped the single 16GB stick for two 8GB sticks at the same speeds. That's all the riveting backstory and information you need. Let's get on with some beautiful blue benchmark charts, starting with the productivity tests, then moving into 
into gaming later in the video. Starting with Cinebench and its good news for the i7-8750H as it obliterates the 7700HQ to the tune of 58% in the multi-threaded test. When you add in 50% more cores and increase the clock speeds of these cores, this is the sort of result you can expect in a best case scenario. The 8750H also provides 9% more performance in the single threaded test, which is just shy of the 11% single core turbo clock speed increase. Gains in performance of around 50% are typical for a lot of workloads. While performing a 2-pass X264 encode, the 8750H was 46% faster than the 7700HQ, which is a significant difference for a rendering test. You won't get quite the same performance uplift when rendering X265 videos in handbrake, but we still achieved a 34% performance gain here with the 8750H, which is significant. In the XL Monte Carlo workload, the 8750H was almost exactly 50% faster than the 7700HQ, which is another strong result for the 6-core CPU that will please those that work with large, calculation-heavy spreadsheets. Compression and decompression is a huge win for the 8750H. In 7-zip, the 8750H is 55% faster than the 7700HQ in compression and a huge 69% faster in decompression. It's a similar result in WinRAR where the 8750H was 53% faster in its compression heavy benchmark. The 8750H even outperformed the 7700HQ in WinRAR single threader test to the tune of 15%. Moving on to our Adobe benchmarks, which utilize both the CPU and GPU, starting with Premiere. In this test, the 8750H was 25% faster at rendering a video with Lumetri effects than the 7700HQ when using a laptop with the same GPU inside. You won't see a significant performance advantage in Photoshop, at least while performing an iris blur, with the 8750H only performing around 9% faster. Not a terrible result, but it's not as strong as many of the other benchmarks we've shown so far. The only benchmark that showed effectively no performance difference is MATLAB. As a largely single-threaded test that favors high memory bandwidth, the lack of improvements to the memory controller could have limited any performance gains in this workload. Most PC mark tests are single threaded, so it's no surprise to see single digit performance gains in this workload. In the older PC mark 8 home test, the 8750H was 8% faster than the 7700HQ in a system with the same GPU. That narrowed to 6% in the creative workload, though it did grow to 12% in the work test and 9% in the newer PC mark 10. If you're interested in memory bandwidth, there is no real difference between the 8750H and the 7700HQ. Both support up to DDR4-2666 and with a dual channel configuration, you'll get around 25 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. Cache performance, however, is significantly improved across the board. The final test I'll mention before moving to the gaming benchmarks is 3D Mark's Time Spy test. While the overall score is just 11% higher than a system with the 7700HQ and an equivalent GPU, the CPU score is a good 52% higher as expected, which helps provide most of the overall score improvement. And if you're wondering about the integrated GPU, it still uses the same UHD 630 as the previous 7700HQ. So the general consensus is the i7-8750H provides a significant performance increase over the i7-7700HQ for productivity workloads, particularly those that are multi-threaded and can make good use of the extra two cores. But what about gaming, especially on a typical gaming laptop that is limited in both CPU and GPU power? Let's kick things off with one of the most CPU limited games we test with, Civilization VI. Here the 8750H provides a decent 29% performance uplift when looking at average frame rates, compared to the 7700HQ in an MSI laptop with the same GPU and memory configuration. However, 1% lows don't benefit at all from the extra CPU power, so the experience of the game on the newer 8th gen CPU isn't necessarily superior. Assassin's Creed Origins is another game that likes a fast CPU and here we're seeing a 12% gain in favour of the 8750H when looking at average frame rates using the Ultra preset at 1080p, which extends to 30% in 1% low performance. When we're talking about a difference between 36 and 47 FPS in that crucial 1% low figure, having that extra CPU power is certainly pretty handy.
I also tested with the medium preset at 1080p, and that margin isn't as large in favor of the 8750H at 11% in average frame rates and 24% in 1% lows. At least in this game, it appears both quality presets have some CPU limitations. Watch Dogs 2, another Ubisoft title, famously punishes the CPU. Here we're looking at an 8% performance gain in favour of the 8750H compared to the 7700HQ in average frame rates, which grows slightly to 11% when looking at 1% lows. This is using the Ultra preset, so if you want to turn the settings down to the Medium preset, the margin grows to a 12% on average and 16% in 1% lows. Surprisingly, Mass Effect Andromeda benefits a fair bit from the faster 8750H. Using the ultra quality preset at 1080p, the game is 17% faster on average with the 6 core CPU and 27% faster looking at the 1% low results. In some games, the quality preset you opt for will determine whether you benefit from the extra CPU horsepower, at least with the GTX 1070 Max-Q. If you love the Ultra preset, you'll only see up to an 11% performance improvement in Rise of the Tomb Raider, for example, but if you switch to High at 1080p, expect 16% better 1% lows. Several other games at fairly typical quality level showed single digit or even zero performance improvements with the 8750H. Grand Theft Auto V, for example, performed within the margin of error of a 7700HQ system using high settings, and that's with an average frame rate that exceeded 100 FPS. Prey, which produces a 1% low figure above 60 FPS using the very high preset, also showed no performance gains with the 8750H. Hitman, which can be CPU limited at times, surprisingly showed no difference to 1% low performance with the 8750H when playing at ultra detail settings. Middle Earth Shadow of War was around 6% faster with the 8750H regardless of whether you played using the ultra or high preset, the latter of which provides a 1% low above 60 FPS. So with a fairly typical, if not upper-end, discrete laptop GPU, the i7-8750H doesn't produce as much of a performance gain in gaming as with the productivity workloads. In a best case scenario, unless you're using unreasonably low settings for the GPU in your device, you can get up to a 30% performance gain in 1% lows. Now this is far from an insignificant result, in fact a 30% gain to these crucial 1% low figure will produce a noticeably smoother and better experience. However, the extent to which you'll get a performance uplift depends on the game and the settings you use. On the vast majority of gaming laptops, you'll be GPU bottlenecked in modern titles, even at modest quality levels at 1080p. With the 1070 Max-Q inside our test system, performance gains in the 5-15% to range are most common, even in titles that already averaged in the 80-100fps to FPS range on a 7700HQ equipped system. Again, the lower you push quality levels, the more CPU bottleneck you'll become. But for a lot of gamers targeting a 60fps 1% low figure and maybe say 100fps average using a medium to high preset, the extra CPU power of the 8750H is only going to make a modest difference relative to the 7700HQ in laptops with the most popular discrete GPUs. And if you're more of an ultra quality gamer targeting 40 to 60 FPS, the benefits are even less. The real benefit to the i7-8750H and having 6 cores in a laptop form factor are productivity workloads. Performance gains around the 50% mark are typical for the 8750H relative to the 7700HQ in multi-threaded workloads, with gains as high as 69% in decompression. Single-threaded performance is also up, producing gains just shy of 10%. But if you're mostly interested in this CPU for gaming, the i7-8750H isn't going to revolutionize your experience. In systems with the same GPU, the 8750H only provides a modest improvement over the last few Intel H-series generations, as most gaming laptops are still GPU bottlenecked to a varying extent. There are performance gains to be had in some situations, but if you're in the market for a new gaming laptop, your focus should still be on the GPU. Of course, where it makes sense, you should always buy a system with the latest generation of CPUs inside, but if you do find a good deal on a gaming laptop with a last gen i7-7700HQ in it, you could only be sacrificing a small amount of performance for a decent price saving. 
The one caveat I'll make to that is for those buying laptops with the GTX 1080 or faster, the CPU will have more of an influence on gaming performance at 1080p with that level of GPU, so keep that in mind. Most gaming laptops being GPU bottlenecked in typical conditions shouldn't take away from what is still a great CPU from Intel and a significant step forward in a 45 watt power envelope. Like with the 15 watt U series parts that hit the market last year, these new H series parts provide a significant performance improvement that should entice anyone who needs high levels of CPU performance on the go. Whether you have a 3rd gen laptop from years back or a 7th gen laptop from just last year, there are plenty of reasons to upgrade to a new machine with an 8th gen part inside like the i7-8750H, particularly if your primary focus is productivity apps. Expect to see a lot of laptops with Coffee Lake CPU inside hit the market this month so you will certainly have plenty of choices for upgrading. Over the next couple of months we'll hopefully get our hands on more Coffee Lake laptops not just to check out the rest of the CPU line but also to see what sort of impact these new CPUs have on gaming laptops with different discrete GPUs. But that's it for this one though. Big thanks to Gigabyte for providing us with the Aero 15X for our first test of these Coffee Lake CPUs. Definitely check that laptop out, links in the description below. Give us a like if you enjoyed this content, consider subscribing for more. And we also have a Patreon at patreon.com slash hardwareunboxed where you can support us directly. I'll catch you in the next one.